We're turning this morning, please, to Paul's epistle to the Galatians. And we're in Galatians chapter number 2, please. Paul's epistle to the Galatians. And we're in chapter number 2. And come with me, please, down to verse number 15. We'll take up the reading at verse number 15. Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 15. We who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the Lord, law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. And I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And we know that the Lord will add to us, add His blessing to that reading from His own precious truth. This morning, child of God, it's of great importance to us, especially those of us who know and love the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior this morning. It's of vital importance this morning that we should never, ever lose sight of what the Lord has done for us. We should never lose sight this morning that Christ is our Savior and all that He's done for us on, on Calvary's rugged cross. It's always good and it's of great importance that we never lose focus of the Savior. To remember this morning we're to behold the Lamb of God which, which taketh away the sin of the world. You know, child of God, we must never lose sight of that this morning. And all what the Lord Jesus Christ done for us on that cruel cross at Calvary, the Lamb of God, Never lose focus this morning of the Lamb of God. You remember in the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 53 and verse number 7, the prophet could see the Lord Jesus as the Lamb of God when he said that he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep done before her shears, so opened he not his mouth. And you remember the Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, that he was the Lamb without spot and without blemish. And away in Revelation 5 and 12, he was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. You know, my dear brother and sister in the Lord this morning, we must never lose sight of Christ as our Savior. And dear unsaved friend this morning, I want to bring Christ as Savior before you just for a few moments. I know this is the ministry of the Word Meeting. Nothing tells me that I can't preach the gospel either. And dear unsaved friend, I bring Christ before you. And I want to point out to you this morning, he's, he's the only Savior of sinners. 
And I want to tell you again and again, and I'll tell you again, how he went to Calvary's cross, and how he was made sin for you, and how he bore your sin in his own body upon the tree. And remember this this morning, dear unsaved friend, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And the Lord Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. And I want you to see the scars and the nail prints and all that he endured for you in Calvary's cross. And I'll tell you why. If you're not saved in this meeting this morning, let me tell you, time's running out on you. If you're not saved in this meeting this morning, you remember this. You're seven days nearer hell than you were this type last week. Seven days near hell, unsaved friend. And this morning, how far down the road will you travel in your folly and in your ignorance? Turning your back on Christ, turning your back on God's love, turning your back on God's mercy and trampling underfoot the precious blood of Christ. O oh, turn, while the Savior in mercy is calling, and steer for the harbor light, for how do you know that your soul may be drifting over the dead line tonight? And there's some of you in this meeting this morning, and you're not saved, and you know the gospel inside out. It's not that you don't know. And too many Christians, or sorry, too many unsaved people, they have died Abner's death. Do you know how Abner died? He died as a fool dieth. Many a man died a fool. How did he die a fool, George? He died knowing all that he had to do, but refused to take that final step. Dear unsaved friend, my heart is heavy for you this morning, whoever you are. I wouldn't like to think Somebody could die an Abner's death who's sitting in this meeting this morning. It would be sad that tonight, tonight you're, you could be lying on a mortuary slab in Belfast, and you're sitting in this meeting this morning. And tonight you could be in a mortuary slab in Belfast. And I want to bring the Savior before you just now. And I plead from the core of my heart, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And come this morning while the Savior in mercy is called. But for us Christians, how precious that moment will be when our death comes. Just imagine it, you know, absent from the body, present with the Lord. But this morning, child of God, God doesn't want you and I to focus this morning on Christ as Savior. He wants you and I this morning to focus on Christ as Christ as Lord. He wants you this morning to search your heart. And He wants me, as He has done all week, for me to search my heart and to focus this morning not on Christ as Savior, 
the Savior of our soul, but to seek Him and focus on Him concerning crowning Christ as Lord of our lives. Dear child of God, is He really your Lord this morning? Is He really Lord of your life? Is He really your Lord? Oh, He's your Savior, but is He really your Lord? We often talk about Christ as Savior, but how many times do we really focus upon Him as, as Christ as Lord? Is He really your Lord this morning? Is He really Lord of your life? Is He really Govern everything concerning to do with your life? Is He really Lord, child of God? How do I really crown Christ as Lord of my life? Paul says this morning in Galatians 5, 24, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. There's a wee lesson this morning. When it comes to crowning Christ as Lord, let us make sure this morning that we do not hold on to that as an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts. Let us listen to what God says this morning, how we must crown Christ as Lord of our life. God's message this morning, that's what it is, crowning Christ as Lord of our life. And it's founded upon my text this morning because the Apostle Paul gives us a clear instruction how he crowns Christ Lord of his life. My text this morning that God wants to speak to us through is Galatians 2. And it's the opening words of verse number 20. And this is how Paul crowns Christ as Lord of his life. This is what he says. I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Tell me this, child of God, can you say that? Can you say you're crucified with Christ? Can I say this morning, I am crucified with Christ? Is that your testimony? I am crucified with Christ? I want you to notice first of all this morning, you know this is a great choice that every Christian must make. It's a choice this morning that you must take, and I want you to notice it's a personal choice. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. There's something we must remember this morning, child of God. We must never forget it. And it must burn into our hearts, and it must burn into our minds, and it has to burn into our consciences. Do you know what it is? It's Romans 14 and 12. You say to me, George, what does Romans 14 and 12 says? Do you know what Romans 14 and 12 says? Every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. If you're saved by God's grace, and you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, and born again of the Holy Ghost, you remember this child of God. Every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. There's no getting out of it. There's no running away from it. Every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. What does Paul say? 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And I'll tell you, friend, it'll come out then as to whether Christ was Lord of our lives or not. Too many Christians are too good at judging others. And I hope there's no child of God in here. And you're good at joy, judging others. Too many Christians, and the point the finger to this one, and the point the finger to that one, and the point the finger to the other one, it's passing judgment on. And it's wrong, child of God. And God hates it. 
The Lord Jesus says, Judge not that ye be not judged. This morning the Lord Jesus points down upon George McConnell and he causes George McConnell to look into his own heart and ask the question, is Christ really Lord of my life? It's a personal choice. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Do you remember Joshua this morning? Joshua in Joshua 24, 15 says to the people, says to the nation, listen, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Is he really Lord this morning? Is he really ruler of all? You know, child of God, the first duty of every Christian, the first duty of every saint, the first duty of every soul, every day, is not to find its freedom, but to find its master. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has to be Lord of all. A young recruit had joined the Navy. He wasn't a set sail for about two months. He was based in Portsmouth. He went to his officer one day and spoke to the officer and asked the officer for leave. He says, Officer, I need to attend a wedding on such and such a Saturday and such and such a date. And the officer said, That's okay, that's okay. You can go as long as you're back on this ship for 5.30. And the young, officer, the young man said to the officer, but the officer, you don't understand one thing. He says, what's that, sir? He says, I'm in the web. And the officer turned around and says, there's one thing you don't understand, son. You're in the Navy. There's one thing a lot of Christians forget and they don't understand. There's one thing a lot of Christians doesn't understand, and it's this. We are not our own, for we've been bought with a price, and that price was the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. I, for one, cannot properly crown Christ as Lord of my life until I properly, personally, crucify myself. It's a personal choice. I want you to notice something else in that text. It's not only a personal choice, it's a, it's a present choice. He says, for I am crucified with Christ. I want you to notice what the Apostle Paul didn't say. The Apostle Paul did not say, I was once crucified with Christ. He says, I am crucified with Christ, you know. You know, crowning Christ as Lord of our lives, it's not a once and for all act this morning. It's not a once and for all experience. Crowning Christ as Lord of all this morning. Listen, I tell you, it's a daily struggle. It's a daily struggle. And I don't know about you, but I know a lot about me. And I find that in me, in me, there's a daily struggle between the flesh and the spirit. There's a lot of supersonic Christians going about the day saying, oh, I have no problem with that. And I'll tell you, well, I have a daily problem with it. Boys, I have a struggle that goes in me on and me every day between the flesh and the spirit. And if you're down there and you're looking up at me and says, George McConnell, that's hard to believe, I'll tell you, don't you think a word of it. I'm just like you. I'm no different. I struggle just like the rest of you. 
And you know, dear child of God, this morning, this is what I see. And how often, how often do I, how often do we allow the flesh to take the crown off Christ's head? And to rob Christ of his lordship in our lives. How often, child of God, have we allowed the flesh to rob Christ of his lordship in our lives? You see, crowning Christ as Lord of our lives is not a once and for all experience at all. I have to say that's such a constant choice to do. It's constant. Every day, dear child of God, there's always something that comes along. Our pride comes along. Self-ego comes along. Self-interest comes along. It's like the weeds in my garden. Boys, I don't know about your garden, but my garden's terrible with weeds. And you spray them. And for a week or two, they're gone. And you think that's it. And you go back out in a fortnight with a moor, and you're starting the moor, and you're looking into the round the sides of the, the flower bed. There, they're back again. And then I tell you, this weed killing once for all, not at all. Not in my garden, it's not. It's the same with the flesh. Do you see the flesh? No matter how many times I have crucified it, it always seems to come back to life again. And what I find is this. The more you seek to crown Christ as Lord of your life, the more the flesh and self tries to raise its head again. Paul says, I am crucified. Paul didn't say, I was crucified the day I got saved on the Damascus road. No, no. I am. It's a constant, constant, constant thing. It's a personal choice. It's a present choice. Notice the text. It's a painful choice. He says, I am what? Crucified. It's a painful choice. I'm telling you, crucifixion, it was the most painful, agonizing death. And child of God, listen to me. You and I have learned this week, if you and I really want to crown Christ Lord of our lives, there's an, ordin there's an ordination ceremony that must take place. Ah, oh, you just don't go and stick the crown on the Savior's head at all. There's an ordination ceremony that must take place. And that ordination ceremony is crucifixion of ourselves. It's painful. It's painful to put anything of the flesh to death. I don't like it. wonder what area of your life this morning is I to search my life. What area of the life is calling for you this morning to hear the hammering of the nails? Is there something in your life this morning that's preventing you, that's stopping you, that's hindering you this morning from crowning Christ as Lord of your life? Oh, He's the Savior of their soul, your soul. There's no doubt about that. He's the Savior of your, of your soul. But He's not the Lord. He's not the Lord of your life, dear. And you know he's not the Lord of your life, brother, either. 
because there's things in your life that needs to be put to death. I wonder this morning in recent days, is there something in your life that God has brought before you and He wants you to put it to death? It's painful. I remember when I used to work for Paul Thompson, I delivered stuff to a wee man and Donna Cloney. A wee man lived on his own. And he had a wee dog wrapped up on a rug. Don't know what breed it was. And he says, that's a lovely wee dog. Doesn't look too well, sir. And the wee man broke down. That's all I have. He says, I've had to make an awful choice. It's got about half a dozen tumors. He says, I hate having to do this. I know what's for the best. I'm taking it to the vet tomorrow. To put him to sleep. Do you know what was terrible to listen to that wee man? I'm telling you this morning, what is it? What painful choice is God asking you to put to death in your life? Oh, it may be precious to you, but it needs to die. It needs to be crucified. Is there some way this morning, child of God, you know this morning right well, you know that the way you're living, it's not right? It's contrary to the teaching of God's Word. It's not right, and you know it. The way I live, the way we live, it's not right. And God is asking you this morning to put it to the cross, to put it right. If you really want to claim Christ and crown Christ as your Lord, just to put it right this morning. Is He Lord of your living? Is He Lord of your giving? Is the Lord looking you to crucify your self-interest in your giving? There's a car dealership in Dunyanin. I'm not going to mention his name. He's in glory now. He never wanted his name mentioned about this when he was alive, and I'm certainly not going to do it now even when he's in glory. A well-known evangelist in this week country went to, his, went to his car showroom to give him business because he was a Christian. It was the time when the car, the car dealerships were struggling. Men were being paid off all over the place. This wee evangelist come in and he says, I'm interested in this car here. And the car dealer said to him, well, tell me this. He says, are you trading in or are you buying straight? He says, I'll, I'll trade in, he says, because how am I going to sell the car? He says, I'll tell you what I'll do. He says, I'll sell the car for you and every penny that that car makes, I'll put it back in your pocket. told him the car he wanted, and when he showed, he looked up the price of the car, he turned the book around, and he says, that's what that car's costing me. He says, I'll give you the car for what it's costing me. And the wee evangelist says, listen, I haven't come here to ask you for a cheap car. He says, you sell that car to me the way you'd sell it to anybody else. He says, I'll do it for everybody else. He says, I'll do it for you. You serve the Lord as well. deal was done. The wee man was to come back next week to take the car, to sell the car to him, or to, to, to buy the car. 
that morning, that morning, that morning the car dealership man done his Bible readings about the wee lad who gave us, who gave us five loaves and two fishes to the, to the Lord. He gave us all. And the Lord said to that man as he was doing his readings, you're not going to sell that car to that man, you're going to give him that car. The man says, I can't do that in this climate. He says, I can't do it. He says, you're not trust." That afternoon, the, the wee man came in, handed the man the envelope. He says, what's in this envelope? He says, that's the check for the car. He says, I'm sorry, but I can't take that. He says, the Lord says, I have to give you the car. What? I have to give you the car. There's the keys. It's yours. All down through that year, that was in the early 80s, all down through that year when garage men were paying off mechanics, this wee man had a look for mechanics because work just went up like that. Car sales went up. And in that one year, he never had sales figures like it. What have you got that the Lord's looking this morning? Is he Lord of your living? Is he Lord of your giving? Is he Lord of your money, sir? Is he Lord of your tithing this morning? Is he Lord of your time? Is he Lord of your talents? What needs to be crucified to really make him Lord? You'll never know happiness, and you'll never know blessing, and you'll never know liberty, and you'll never know freedom until you put it right and put it to the cross. And I'll tell you, friend, what you put to the cross that has to do with the flesh the Lord will pour blessings upon you more than what you could receive. It's a personal choice. It's a present choice. Aye, it's a painful choice. Oh, but it's a powerful choice. I am crucified with Christ. Oh, child of God this morning, what does it mean I'm crucified with Christ? I'll tell you what it means. It means us living out His will in our lives. That's what it means. That's what it means. And that's what Paul meant when he said, I am crucified with Christ. No wonder this morning how many of us can say, Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Lord, you choose the way I go. Lord, you choose the things I do. Crowning Christ as Lord of our lives. It's a personal choice. It's a present choice. Ah, boys, but it's a painful choice. But it's a powerful choice. What's in your life? And what's in my life? That's calling for the hammering of the nails. The Lord Jesus says, Him that cometh after me must take up his cross and follow me. May God, by his Spirit and by his Spirit alone, help us to really crown Christ as Lord of our lives. Amen.